guys, I just got a letter saying I'm going to be Evan Hansen. Wait a minute. Oh my god, yes, did you see it? Huh? What do you mean it's not real? That's awkward. Um, anyway, here's vlog 14. Who wrote this? Hello, how have you been? I've had quite a nice week. Had a couple of days off where I was doing some filming for Silent Witness on the BBC. So check that out later in the year. I don't play a dead body before you ask. Right, so on Monday, I was at the space for Adam Dawson's solo cabaret. He's done a show there before called Guy Sing Dolls with Ryan Anderson and Alan Hawke. And he's back this time by himself. We make them cannonballing down to the sky, gleaming inside, bright as a rose. Who knows? It's only just out of reach, down the block, on a beach, under a tree. The show was called Contemporary Classics and started off with Adam accompanying himself on the piano. He's a talented little boy, isn't he? I know I must see. Spring Awakening at the Hope Mill Theatre and over Christmas was in Susical at the Suffolk Playhouse. No one notices anything, not one person is listening, they don't have any way of knowing. Nobody knows that I have wings. Joined at his cabaret by Scott Hunter and Ronan James Burns. I like Shake Shack, I like Moma, and New Jersey's right Moma, the parades when I see them, and even the DMV, and the Brooklyn Bridge by Mike, and there's lots of stuff I like, but I love Pepsi. I love Pepsi, I love Pepsi, I love Pepsi. I love Pepsi. and Pepsi loves me. So on Tuesday, I tried to get along to the Suffolk Playhouse to see the Rubenstein kiss. However, my train was delayed and I completely missed the show. So I went back on Thursday evening and again, for some reason, I have no idea how, managed to get on the Bakerloo line the wrong direction, which made me 10 minutes late again. However, by the time I got there, there'd been a technical delay and the show hadn't even started. Whew. So I managed to see it. The Rubenstein Kiss by James Phillips tells a true story of Esther and Jacob Rubenstein who were executed for allegedly spying on the atomic bomb. It was a really great play and it starred my friend Stephen Billington. Stephen had worked in the industry longer than I've known and he's brilliant. Stephen actually used to teach me acting at the Actors Centre. Some of you might recognise him from Coronation Street in Hollyoaks, but he's done a lot of theatre. So it's really nice to see him back on the stage. And also in this was Dario Coates. Dario was in a production last year called Sid, which I really, really liked. And he's brilliant. In this, he plays an American, and his accent was spot on, as well as his little singing voice, which I didn't realise he had hidden away. Now, I only just managed to see the show before it closed on Saturday, so if you're wanting to see it, you can't. Now, I know I joked about it at the beginning of the vlog, but this week saw the rather bizarre news article about 19-year-old student Brandon Moranis from Trinity Laban. 
Weston Wilmer broke the news that Brandon had received a letter from the producers of Dear Evan Hansen, offering him the title role. What appeared on the surface as a genuine letter turned out to be an elaborate hoax. The whole thing was quite bizarre. Wilma swooped in thinking he'd got an exclusive, whereas I was a bit more suspicious. So I posted a question, has Brandon actually received this confirmation or is it a hoax? And sure enough, it did turn out to be a hoax which is quite upsetting when you think about it. For this poor lad, who not only is victim of this type of cruel prank, but then thanks to publications like Western Wilma and even myself, we then span it into a frenzy, which now everybody knows about. I'll be honest if I don't feel a bit responsible for my part in that. And I just hope that Brandon is okay and that he saw the funny side of the whole situation. He released a statement to Broadway World saying, I've learned a lot these past few days. Perhaps this can be a lesson to all performers to be more careful about opportunities they are given. This will just drive me harder to get what I dream of. So it does sound like he's taken it on the chin and learned from it. But nonetheless, it's still a cruel joke. And whoever was behind it, although they probably thought they were being funny, it's quite, it's quite shocking. And like I say, it teaches publications like Western Wilma and myself to check our facts before swooping in, trying to get an exclusive and thinking we were ahead of the game. Exclusives like this are revealed in a certain way and we should know better than to speculate and to circulate rumours. Shame on all of us. Now in other news, which don't worry, has been checked and verified, casting has been announced for Evita in Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. Now if you remember earlier in the year, director Jamie Lloyd faced opposition when he proposed that he may be considering actors of colour to play Evita. It was a controversial topic. So speculation about who was going to play Eva Peron has been like wildfire. And on Thursday, they finally committed that Samantha Pawley will be taking on the title role. The American actress will be joined by another American to play Peron, Hector Rivera has recently played Emilio Estevan in Get On Your Feet. And joining the lineup to play Shay is Trent Saunders, again another American actor who was recently in Aladdin on Broadway. Now the casting announcement has raised the question again, why are these parts not being offered to British actors? Recently when Catherine McPhee was offered a part in Waitress, a lot of people complained. However, Catherine is going to be stepping down to make way for a British actress in July. But as well as the American cast, there's a Canadian choreographer, Fabian Alois. He recently choreographed Madagascar and before that, The Rink at the Suffolk Playhouse, where he was nominated for a What's On Stage Award. I was chatting to Fabian the other day, who is really excited about this project and told me that this is going to be a production of Evita like nobody has seen before. I think it's going to be incredible, and I can't wait to see it. Continuing with casting news, Drew McConey's Jesus Christ Superstar, which is transferring to the Barbican this summer, has announced their full cast. Playing Jesus will be Robert Tripoloni. Playing Judas will be Ricardo Alfonso, and playing Mary will be Soleil Garnett. Joining the cast is also X Factor's Matt Cardle, who Drew recently worked with on Strictly Ballroom and Nathan Amsey, who you might have seen recently in Heathers. On Friday, we were given a little bit of a treat by the people from the Apple Store and Disney Theatricals. Anthony Hewitt and Coco Basigara from Disney's Aladdin were in the store to give us a cheeky little performance of A Whole New World. <laughs> I was at a work 
workshop presentation of Murder at the Gates, a brand new musical by writer of Spring Awakening, Stephen Sater, and busted star, James Bourne. They presented three performances with an all-star lineup, featuring Madalena Alberto, who's just been announced to appear in Get On Your Feet, as well as original cast members of Spring Awakening, Evelyn Hoskins, and Heather's star, Jamie Muscato. Scott Hunter, who was performing earlier in the week with Adam Dawson, was also part of the cast. Now, it can be forgiven because this is only a workshop presentation, but this is a second tryout, having been developed two years ago. And honestly, knowing that it had been worked on before, I expected a lot more from it. It's a bit of a bizarre piece. I don't watch the TV series Gossip Girls, but I imagine that this is what they're trying to do. That tone of humour. However, it just didn't translate. And I don't think it's because we're a British audience. I just didn't think it was very funny. The music is actually pretty good. There's no doubt that James Bourne can write great pop music. Whether it works as musical theatre, I don't quite know. It's set at a murder mystery party where a real murder takes place. It's far from original. There is no doubt that this cast were incredible. And at moments where I just switched off, I still enjoyed just hearing their voices. At one point they sang an entire song about biscuits. I have no idea what it was about. Now I talked about Scratch Nights last week and on Friday, I was at another scratch night, this time brought to us by Pluck Theatre. Pluck Theatre is a small production company by Philip Honeywell and Emma Jane Martin. They've had a couple of productions at the Park Theatre and Old Red Lion, and have now taken over the Silver Building in East London. On Friday, they were at their first scratch night in their new premises, entitled Queer Stories. That summer, one Saturday morning, Bright sunny day, my parents decided to cheer me up by taking me down the road to the local annual Pride Parade. So it's a good time to mention now that I'm from Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> so it was still the late 90s, right? Okay, so it was still Section 28 was still a thing, civil partnerships, just a distant twinkle in Tony Blair's eyes. This is not a coming out story. This is a love story. <laughs> A self love story. <laughs> Sounds very cliche, doesn't it? You know? What's that thing RuPaul says? It's something about if you. Does anyone know? Like, if you can't. interested in seeing more, Plug Productions' next Scratch Night is on the 31st of May at the Silver Building, where their theme this time will be Apologies. It was a really fun evening and I even managed to catch up with my old pals Ralph Bogard and Jordy Jacobs who were there to watch as well. On Saturday I was at the Bromley Players Amateur Dramatics production of Footloose. I don't see nearly enough amateur dramatics and to be honest, they're great fun. It's so inspiring to watch people really get into the spirit and throw themselves in. 
and it's really nice just to be able to go along and support. Their next production will be Our House in October, so definitely go along and check it out. In exciting news, the original cast recording of The Share Show has been released. Oh, and it's so good. I saw the show last year in New York, and I think it's brilliant. Stephanie J. Blocks just blew my mind. And I am now obsessed with this soundtrack. I've had it on all weekend. Honestly, check it out, download it, buy it, find it, it's brilliant. And I really hope this show comes to London because it is superb. So good. On Sunday, I was back at Above the Arts for That Cabaret, hosted again by Stuart Briggs. River running free, you know how I feel, blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me, and I'm feeling Turn the radiator on whenever you want some heat. With every kind of comfort, every house is all complete. You can walk to privies in the rain and never at your feet. They've gone about as far as they can go. They've gone about as far as they can go. I wanted a girl who would lock on the door to protect all those gemstones she's got in her ears. So that's it for this week. I hope you've had an incredible week. Enjoy the rest of the week and your Easter bank holiday. And I will see you next time.